Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> I, I have to laugh when saying it. This, uh, this game that nobody seemed to want to win, especially on our side, the Atlanta Falcons make one of the most hilarious mistakes we've ever seen in a long time, it, well, you know, in special teams where they just allow the onside kick. We get it back. Greg Zerline makes an excellent play. Gets the game-winning field goal, 40-39. to 39, The Cowboys win after starting the game down 20-0 to zero in the first quarter where it was clear that Dan Quinn and the Atlanta Falcons, I call them the FUBU Falcons because their jerseys look like FUBU jerseys, and they play the fumbleitis card. Those of you who played Madden back in the mid-2000s know what I'm talking about. And we can't hold on to the football to save our lives. They're punching it out. We're making mistakes. We're not executing. Our defense never really showed up to this game. And still we compete. And still we get ourselves back in this football game despite horrible coaching on our side. Mike McCarthy, our special teams, just everything was a disaster. But there was a will and there was, there was you know, just responding to adversity. Our quarterback, our running back. Uh, we have two backup tackles in the game. Brandon Knight starts at left tackle. Excuse me, Terrence Steele is in there at right tackle. We're missing Leo Collins. We're missing Ty Tyron Smith. Connor Williams is struggling again with Grady Jarrett. It's, it's chaos. It is sheer chaos. And they fight. They continue to fight. I got to give credit as well to C.D. Lamb and the plays he made all day. Uh, Dak Prescott, who I'll get to here in a second. But there's games like this in the NFL, especially this season right now in COVID and, and just in general, um, where you just have to try to put yourself in the best position to win. And I felt like the Cowboys didn't even do that today. But if you're a Falcons fan, you're sick because Matt Ryan, who never seemingly got touched unless he scrambled and was running for positive yardage, Calvin Ridley was the best player in this game, I would say until Dak Prescott did what he did with his heroics. I mean, you know, the, our, our, our pass rush that we've souped up, we gave a lot of praise to Alden Smith last week. Demarcus Lawrence, who I believe did not finish this game. Everson Griffith, who finally got a tackle. But we were nowhere to be found. It seemed like the Falcons could move the ball at will. Uh, but a couple of plays that really, you know, could have did us, done us in, the Russell Gage, third and two play call where he throws a perfect pass to Julio Jones. He drops that, um, you know, just the, the two point conversion that the Falcons don't get. So you have kind of that score differential, the Cowboys not being punished for going for two early, which I didn't, I know a lot of people were blowing up coach McCarthy about going for two early, but you know, five minutes of the game, either way you needed the two point conversion. I just didn't necessarily like such a slow developing play to Zeke on that um you know the fumbles again going back to the fumbles at the beginning of the game i mean we've we talked about this all of 2019 especially on this channel hey starting games well starting games fast and not only you know are we it's not even like we were starting with three and outs or getting sacked we were starting with turnovers the falcons have the ball in plus position taking advantage of it putting points on the board and we just couldn't get out of our own way and there's been too many times with this, whether it's under the Jason Garrett regime, now under Mike McCarthy, we saw it last week, too many times we couldn't get out of our own way. And still we respond. And I have to give a lot of credit to our leader, Dak Prescott, QB1, who is, you know, much maligned in the media, gets a lot of, a lot of flack from people within this fan base who don't appreciate what he does give us. It's too many people that don't appreciate what Dak does do, but they want to talk about everything you know, hey, he doesn't uh, uh, pick us up when we need it. He doesn't win games on his own, blah, blah, blah. But what do you have to say about today? Because onside kick aside, that was a gift from the Falcons. And, and they have to have a conversation with their special teams coordinator and their hands team on why they don't know the freaking rules. However, when I have a quarterback that can lead me to 37 points with two backup tackles and, you know, just stagnation all over the place and – you know, we had some drops in there again. We have turnovers. And he's steady. He got knocked out of this football game right back in. We don't ever talk about his durability. So many quarterbacks in this league 
under the circumstances that Dak Prescott played under today would not have even finished this football game, let alone still throwing with extreme efficiency from the pocket, still moving around, still making plays, making plays with his legs. He was a threat in the red zone today, three touchdowns. Granted, they were all short yardage, but still just showing what he can do there. Moving around, there was a throw on the sideline of Blake Bell where he almost gets tackled a couple times, gets out of that. You know, and, and, and early in the game, the, like the fumble that he had, that was a huge mistake. And I was really mad at Dak because it's like, you guys, you are doing too much. Zeke, you all, everybody was just pressing. And then the coaching staff starts to press because now we're starting to make these weird ass decisions on special teams. Granted, the Chris Jones call, I didn't hate that because it was, the play was there to be made. It was a very, very poor throw, didn't execute, right? When you go and chart the game, you're, that's going down as a did not execute. I don't think that's really a failure of the staff. But the kick return stuff was very, very puzzling today. Um, why we kept having Tony Pollard bring it out instead of, you know, taking the ball where it was. The decision to go for it on fourth and five uh, in the fourth quarter with the punt team was weird. I would have preferred to see the offense just down the field. And, and really, you know, I, I retweeted it uh, from what Joey Eichel said. Let Dak cook. This is something that Seattle fans have complained about. When we got in our tempo stuff, when we're going up tempo, when we're, we're, you know, we get that first first down, get that momentum going, let our wide receivers be great, getting them out in space, letting Zeke cut people up in between the tackles, and letting Dak move with the pace. Our offense is fantastic. We scored 30 points in the second half today. But when we, when we start this, this, this conservative type, you know, we're going 12 personnel, we hand the ball off and all this type of stuff, it's just frustrating to, to – when I say hand the ball off, we're running too much on first down. And, and we're not, you know, that tempo, what it does, especially when you have two backup tackles, just for people that hear that and don't understand, it can slow down the pass rush, makes it easier on those tackles to hold up. Because one of the things you saw is at certain points in the game, especially Terrence Steele starts to get called for holding. And he's they're having to resort to all these tactics because they're struggling. But let me tell you this again, going back to the quarterback, you're not in this football game without veteran quarterback play and knowing how to maneuver. And that's the difference between 2020 Dak Prescott and 2017 Dak Prescott. Now, granted, Brandon Knight wasn't Chaz Green, thank God, and no one on the Falcons was Adrian Claiborne. But Dak in 2017 wasn't in his at that point in his development where he you know, could get the ball out quick, just understood how to manage with a poor line in front of him. Don't listen to the media that keeps saying, oh, Cowboys have a top three offensive line. You can't have a top three offensive line, A, if people aren't available to play, and B, they're not grading out of, uh, well every, every, every week. That's two straight times we've had poor performance with the pass protection, where we can't take the type of shots we want to downfield. Because as y'all saw, when we do have time, we took a shot to, to, to Mark Cooper. He's able to show his gifts, reel the football in. Michael Gallup late in the game, made an enormous catch on the sideline downfield. C.D. Lamb made a couple catches down the field. So we can throw the ball downfield without a problem when the protection is there. Let Dak Prescott have the type of time that Matt Ryan had today where he's back there making a sandwich and doing whatever he wanted to. That means Calvin Ridley can cut up a defense. We have people that can do the same thing that they can do. We just don't – we're just not get able to get that time consistently. But – what Dak is able to do is get us some time to, to, to get all that stuff together to where we can still be efficient offensively if we're running our tempo stuff and mix in our run and have Zeke still be the, the, the elite ball carrier that he is as we, as we get Tyrone back, Tyron back, as we get Lael Collins back, and then we can get back to what the offense really should look like when they're here. And again, Mike McCarthy – still learning the personnel of the team. That doesn't excuse the poor decisions he's making over there. Uh, Mike Nolan, I don't know what they're trying to do. I, I, love, I love the idea of trying to be multiple. But at the same token, when you're learning your personnel, some, not everybody can do is versatile enough to do some of those things. Uh, I think Tyrone Crawford's struggling right now. Demarcus Lawrence didn't finish this game. He's not having – I thought he actually started the game really well, especially against the run. And I knew Todd Gurley wasn't going to be – a big factor. He finished averaging less than three yards per carry today. But when we look at our coverage right now and, and some of the things we're doing, you know, uh, Trayvon Diggs is fighting. Cheeto is fighting, but they're, they're not, you know, Trayvon's going to be a great player. He made a good play today. He missed the pick. Daryl Worley missed the pick. 
that's another thing. We got to take advantage of those turnover opportunities. I never felt like today our defense was ever going to get a turnover the way Atlanta was punching the ball out or just trying to make things happen on the football. I'm still going to celebrate the win. And the best time to learn is when you win and you do make a lot of mistakes versus taking an L, having the morale down. You saw how excited our team was leaving the field. Let's build off of that momentum and, 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 and see if we can get, get going here, especially with the Eagles being 0-2. Washington's getting blasted as I'm looking uh, uh, at the scores right now. So there's a great opportunity for Dallas. We, yeah, we got a tough, tough game next week against the Seattle Seahawks, but that's also a team we're very familiar with from a personnel standpoint of having played them so often. But, you know, what a miraculous game. And, and as a fan, when you think you're out of it and you're, you know, this is like the good side of fandom, right? Where you're like, hey, you know, my afternoon's kind of ruined today. And then they surprise you with whatever. And, and Dan Quinn, y'all know all too well on blowing leads and, and God bless you. Good luck to you um, because they may have opened the door for, for the Dallas Cowboys to really start to develop some momentum here. Now, Dallas isn't going to do anything serious unless they figure out how to at least get decent on defense, period. Because right now they, they still can't even get off the field. Forget the turnovers thing. They, they, they don't even force – they're not forcing punts. Um, they had a good second half against the Rams, but – it's it's uh, it's there's a lot of work that has to be done on that side of the ball. You have individuals who I think are playing OK. I think Joe Thomas has actually been surprisingly good. I think Jalen was a little bit better today. I think Tristan Hill's playing better. But overall, as a group, I mean, you would uh, you would think with a straight drop back team like Atlanta, we'd be able to heat up Matt Ryan today. That was not the case. Um, and, and credit to Atlanta and their play calling. They actually mixed in some of the stuff, the mixed direction, miss direction stuff we saw against the Rams last week, uh, you know, for us and some of the stuff they were able to do with Hayden Hurst. So teams are going to continue to target us on that type of stuff, just like the jet sweep stuff we, we, we struggled with a couple years ago until we prove we can stop it. It's not deep. It's not deep. Um, but like I said, we celebrate the win, the, this, this, this miraculous victory. I'm happy we have a quarterback good enough that's able to put points on the board when so many people are out and, are, and, and we're struggling as a football team. Dak Prescott's our emotional leader. He's the unquestioned leader in the locker room. He's a tough son of a gun. Stayed in there and fought. Ezekiel Elliott, same thing. Right alongside, playing with toughness. We got a young budding star in C.D. Lamb. There's a lot of good to look up to here. But, you know, the, I, we've got to see some better decisions with the coaching staff. I like their aggressiveness, but they have to be a little bit more measured in how they handle some of these things as they continue to learn their personnel. Guys, chime in with your thoughts. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day of football uh, and get a good look at the Seattle Seahawks tonight against the New England Patriots, see how they look against Cam Newton, and if there's anything we can take advantage of next week. Curious to hear everybody. If If you mess with us, please like, share, subscribe. Really appreciate all the support of the channel. Uh, And as always, you know, I'm out. But how how about them? How about them Cowboys? Peace.